Ladies and gentlemen, I got a real treat for you today. Something months in the making. The anticipation on this set release has been crazy, and I finally got it. This is going to be the world's first review of this product. Inside this Walmart box are two Banished Garrison packs. Look at that. Whoa. That is something special, isn't it? One and two. Wow, look at that. Hello once again, YouTube, and welcome back to The Domain. It's been a while since I've been like one of the first people to review a product. Living in Hong Kong, I always got scraps and it took at least a week for something to arrive, but this is right out of the bag. Fresh from Walmart, I made a video a few days ago when this was released online. After I made that video, it sold out within like 10 minutes. Like, you guys are crazy. So this is the Banished Garrison Pack. The Kofret Garrison de Banished. <laughs> Garnison, oh Garnison. Pack Garnicon de Los Banished. I am so excited for this set. And as you saw in my previous video, yes, I do believe this is Basos, the boss in Halo Infinite from the excavation site. He's a little bit different, but I think they made a generic brute chieftain mold for Infinite, and then they made the colors inspired by Basos. We've also got a Victor the Grunt, a really nice elite mercenary, and a brute warrior with a jump pack. Yes, we finally have another jump pack brute. It's been years. We got a Spartan Trailblazer, the UNSC Marine with a brand new face mold, and so much. Shock rifle, grenade, plasma rifle, mangler, gravity hammer, plasma pistol, commando rifle, hydra, spike grenade. Yeah, this is a good set, right? This is a good set. Also, I got a brand new ring light. You can see it right here. I'm upping the quality and the game of my reviews every single day. This is also part one, where I'm going to open the Banished Garrison Pack. In a couple of days' time, I'll do part two, where I open a Garrison Pack and a Marine Platoon pack at the same time. This is the spiritual successor for the Marine Platoon pack. Same packaging, same design, and we always have this kind of thing. We had the hijacked ghost following after the mongoose, and the chopper takedown mirrors the Banshee breakout. So, without further ado, gentlemen, let's break open the Banished Garrison pack. I made a news video on this just months and months and months ago. It's so badass to finally be unboxing it, let alone being one of the first people to unbox it. I've been expressing my dis taste in basic grassy fields, but I mean, infinite is just basic grassy fields most of the time, but I would like them to mix it up with some forests or even like some snow tundras. Like just do whatever, don't just have basic grass and rocks for every single one of your sets though, it's a little bit boring at this point. Inside we have some of the, I think it's gonna be some of the most highly detailed figures uh, Mega Constructs has ever made. These ones look like they have so many paint apps on them, so much to offer, <laughs> and also a little difficult to get out the packaging. This is also one of those sets that I would recommend you keeping sealed if you have a second one, not only for resale value in the future if you're into that kind of thing, but also for the, just the display value. Like this looks fantastic when displayed. Look at this beefy instruction manual showing you how to assemble pre assembled figures, <laughs> but they have to do it, so I, I don't mind. What do we have inside? Look at all these goodies. All right, where do we even begin, ladies and gentlemen? I think the logical thing is to start with the base plate. <laughs> uh, that wasn't what I was gonna say, but why not? Five, kind of five basic base plates. Basic base plates, yeah. Uh, I guess there are six figures, so one of the figures is gonna go on this big one. I assume that would be the jump pack brute. I do also see, yes, we have a translucent rod. There's our rod. We'll pop that in there, ready for the jump pack brute. And, oh man, I do, like I don't know where to start. Look at this big bag of weapons too, yo. This is already looking to be one of the best value for money sets ever, right? I mean, this is $20. $20 for six figures with like this many paint apps. It's extraordinary, it really is. So, uh, we're gonna start with the big bad Bassos. There he is, look at that. Wow. So first of all, I'm going to uh, quickly reflect on what I've been talking about with the Jazzware releases recently. It's time to ditch Craig. Wow. You, you know what? That's That just took me by surprise. I was just about to say, it's time to retire the Craig head. Like, it's time to move on because Craig does not look menacing. I said that about the Tavares, Hyperius, and Master Chief 3-pack, where you've got this really menacing brute, but he just has a Craig face underneath. I, I don't vibe with that anymore. Craig is a fantastic meme, but now I want my figures to look menacing. And hey-ho, it seems like Mega Constructs heard my 
criticism before I even made it. They have replaced the Craig the Brute head with a normal Halo Wars 2 monkey. And honestly, that is just so much better. Like, so, so much better. So shout out to you, Mega Constructs. And also when you hear Bassos talk in the game, he has that kind of face. Like, he's not the most intelligent gorilla. I've been an enormous fan of this Brute Chieftain mold ever since it first premiered in Halo Heroes. Then we got it again in Halo Infinite Blind Bag Series 3. And here it is again. But this time, dialed up to 11 with so much more paint apps. Like, this is phenomenal. The gold and red is just quality. You know me, I've said it before, I love red banished over purple covenant any day. So much better, so much more anger and fuel. There we go. Look, look at the way that gold is applied on like a dark gray undersuit. But you also have like little bits of black running through. It's really menacing. Like I've said before, this is like a mower. This is like some kind of frilled lizard, this design. I feel the same about the elite warlord. They're just really, really menacing designs. I love the spikes coming off his shoulder pieces. I love that he has small little knives on his wrists. I love this figure. And where's his hammer? There we go. Bassos is ready. <laughs> that. Ah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big, big fan of this figure. This is currently the highlight, but I know this is only just going to get better the further into this I go. So take it away, Bassos. You can be our first figure. I give you a solid 10 out of 10. And it's also nice that the head and the hands are a different shade to the rest of the body because it's clear that he's wearing an undersuit and his hands and his face are the only bits that are exposed. The gravity hammer, yes, is uncolored. I don't expect anything in a $20 set to be colored except for Halo Heroes. They're like the only ones. Halo Heroes are kind of the only sets that come with colored weapons. There have been a couple of exceptions, like one of the micro helmets, but it, it's pretty rare. I don't need colored weapons in these sets, though there are a variety of colors which are nice. What are we gonna go for next? We got our Banished, so we're gonna move on to the Brute. Look at that, man. Like, Ah, oh, Mega Constructs, Mega Constructs. You are putting in some effort into these. Wow. I had a conversation with Kellen yesterday. He saw this set and he said, shouldn't the Brutes be taller? Yes, that is a common problem in Mega Constructs. I kind of go both ways. Hey, look, he's still got Craig's face. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's a dopey little like foot soldier. He can have Craig's face. The Brute boss. I madly respect the fact that these have two different gorilla faces. I madly respect that. That's probably one of the highlights of this set. Also, Craig the Brute's head is... Uh, a slightly different tone even to his arms, which I like. Again, we've switched the color halfway down the limbs, so you can clearly see where the jumpsuit ends. This helmet is probably a slightly different plastic to the one on his main armor because you can see very different colors. This is like a vibrant red. This is more dark tones. This is a really nice figure. This is also the first jump pack brute we've had in a long time. Oh, look at that as well. Wow. The way that armor changes as it wraps round to his back, that little red highlight there. There's even a Tiny, I think that's a mistake, but there's a tiny bit of red there as well. Yes, we haven't had a jump pack brute in years and years, and it just came in one set, the radar wreckage, and I wish they'd released more, like it's one of my favorites. I guess we'll give him the mangler. He's great. And then we can attach him on the rod. Yeah, so that's a jump pack brute. And the brutes have just been getting so many awesome designs in Halo Infinite. I really hope to see berserker brutes in Mega Constructs soon, like they are just my favorite. So this has some really good detailings too. I love love especially how that color changes around his chest armor. And he's got a really nice light skin tone. And again, mad respect on the two different Craig head molds. Mad respect. Let's move on to the Elite Mercenary, which I know is a lot of people's favorites just from the product imaging. Mixing silver and red is genius. And they've done it in a really epic way. Elites are always one of those ones where I wish they didn't have a hole in the head because I would love to have some unhelmeted Elites. I could also fill it in. Maybe I will do that in the future. But I feel like the Elite Helmet is the only one that could, if you designed it correctly, just fit on. I, I mean, it would probably fall off all the time. I don't know. I'm not a toy designer. And I know particular focus should be on this chest. The silvers are awesome. And they're not just solid silver. We've got these little red etchings into his armor. Just gives it so much life, man. And you can even see some tiny little sort of uh, scratches. I don't even know if the camera can pick them up. Like almost like less than one millimeter long 
the scratches on either side of his chest. Oh, and then on the top as well, then it runs around to the back. I think this is all just the same old molding. The silvers and the reds, man. And the fact that they change between black and silver jumpsuit halfway down each of the limbs is awesome. Then the red leg armor just slides on top and gives a really nice finish. He's got a different skin tone for his head and clearly he must be wearing gloves because that's all you can see. This elite mercenary man, flawless. And he also comes with a plasma rifle, which mega constructs, you're teasing us. I wish the plasma rifle was in Halo Infinite so badly. I'm giving 343 a chance. I'm giving a lot of the weapons in the sandbox a chance, but I just don't vibe with the weapons in Infinite as much as I should. I guess there is one exception there. I really like the commando rifle. I know some people don't like it. Certainly in multiplayer, I don't use it as much as I should, but I really enjoy using it in the campaign and getting headshots on grunts with this thing is very satisfying. Though, I don't know about you, I, I kind of feel sorry for the grunts in Halo Infinite. I actually choose to spare their lives quite often because they just, they're so cute. They have such cute voices. Anyway, that's a tangent. This elite mercenary, yeah, it goes very well with this brute. The fact that they all came in one set, especially this Victor the Grunt, I would have liked a couple of little silver highlights on this brute to sort of bring them all together. But still, that is a tiny, tiny nitpick. This is a quality figure. Attach it to its base plate. I also really like the color of this base plate. It's got a nice speckling effect. Really nice. That is three banished down, and that's half of the figures. Let's move on to, ah, my sweet baby boy, Victor the Grunt. As some of you may know, the domain was the first channel, or the first people in the world to ever reveal Victor and the Grunt mule in Halo Infinite to the whole world. Like, it was a very exciting experience. It was my first introduction into feeling like I was a Halo YouTuber versus a Mega Constructs YouTuber. And now we've got Victor for, I believe, the third time. He's in the Infinite Series 3 blind bags and the Razorback Blitz. Now we got him in red, that banished red. Ah, oh, it's so cool, man. I love this silver highlight, this little emblem on the top of his helmet. I love the silver stripes on his backpack. His skin tone is basic, running all the way through, and he looks ugly as ever underneath that helmet. I think Mega Constructs definitely wants you to attach two shock rifles, and any time a grunt mule is in a set, it already ups the value of the piece count because you already get three weapons. He always gets introduced into a set with three weapons, the two shock rifles and the plasma pistol. He wields them like a boss. Like a boss A boss bassos. Victor the Grunt, uh, my love for you will never die. Neither will the memes. Victor is vibing. I really expect to see the YouTube channel Victor the Grunt in the chat. If I see him, I'll pin the comment. <laughs> Alright, we got Elite, Grunt, and Brute. It's also just fantastic to get a banished themed set. I saw a lot of criticism when this set was revealed that it wasn't more banished. Like, the Marine Platoon Pack is all UNSC, and this one is only four banished with two UNSC. But look, these are, I, I hate to say it, these are kids' toys. <laughs> these are meant to be marketed at kids, and kids really want some UNSC. They want some military. Like, I don't blame Mega Constructs for including military, especially when they're this badass. First of all, we've got the UNSC Marine, and damn, there are some details on this thing. Look at that. Just soak it in for a couple of seconds, everybody. This looks flawless. This is the moment everyone's been waiting for. Let's remove that helmet. Look at that, man. What a head mold. Look at that. That is like Call of Duty-esque, but you know, these are Marines that are stranded on Zeta Halo. They're gonna do whatever they can to survive and blend into the background, especially at night. I adore this new head mold. He even looks a little worried. I mean, I would be a little worried if I was facing a chieftain, but it doesn't stop there. He's got this basic helmet that's been in a lot of infinite sets. I mean, all of this has been in infinite sets before, but the new colors are so sick. We've got these gold like bronze highlight straps that run across. They really make it feel like it is strapped together with leather. We've got different colored hands to the rest of the body. This nice leg strap that you could attach an accessory to. Uh, let's actually find the accessory. Where is it? I saw it before. <gasps> Have I lost the grenade? Oh, it was so small. I gotta find that grenade. All right, so cut back to the table. I have decided to open the second banished garrison pack just to get the grenade out. This is like the most microscopic grenade, dude. Like, ah, it's so small. But I'll find the other one and then I'll put this one back. But I just want to keep on going with the review. <laughs> We've just moved into this apartment and our bath is currently leaking downstairs into the bottom apartment. So I want to get this review done before the maintenance man tries to come 
come back upstairs and run our water. Look at that grenade. I, I don't think I would ever take it off this leg strap, to be honest. Maybe if I had a diorama, I would, but this just looks nice as it is. And if you take it off, that little jutting out point is not that nice to look at. So I would rather just keep the grenade on, especially the fact that I'll just lose it if I don't. But this marine looks phenomenal. This is probably the best marine we've got in Halo Infinite so far, and I'm all about it. And yes, this marine does come with the swiveling feet, and it's the adjusted height. The original Halo Infinite Marines were released last year and they were too tall. They were taller than Spartans and people said, no, that's enough. We're okay if the brutes are not the right height, but that's enough. We need uh, we need our Marines to be at least the same height as Spartans. And yes, I didn't finish my tangent before. The brutes are not the correct height, but I give exceptions to the fact that Mega Constructs have said publicly they want all their figures to be compatible with all their vehicles, like all their products. So I kind of respect that. Maybe we'll get taller height adjusted brutes in the future. I wouldn't hold out for it, but I know a lot of people are campaigning for it. This Marine will definitely give the Commando to because he is a badass. He definitely deserves that. Uh, one of my favorite things about the Halo Infinite campaign is listening to all the Marine dialogue when you offer them weapons. It's pretty hilarious. Beautiful. Look at that. It's a perfect blend between Halo and Call of Duty. Like the perfect blend. I mean, he's holding the Commando rifle. And I, I said like when I first saw the campaign reveal trailer for Halo Infinite, the Master Chief picked up the Commando rifle. I was like, oh no, Reddit's gonna hate this thing. It's gonna be too Call of Duty but no, everybody likes it. They say it needs to be buffed in strength a little bit, but uh, I think it's okay for now, especially in the campaign, it's a lot of fun. The last figure for today is the Spartan Trailblazer, the sort of recon successor, which I think everybody just adores. Like this is a gorgeous mold. It's a gorgeous mold in game and out of game. The color choices here are awesome. We've got this light sort of silver gray mix. This reminds me of the original exclusive SDCC figures. Then we've got some brown shoulders and a slightly different, maybe very, very dark green highlights on the chest. We got a lightning green visor. Wow, very reflective. And the visor has some black highlights underneath it, which sort of gives it some depth. On the back, we've got a nice belt attachment that is a slightly different color. This is so sweet. This is a really, really nice figure. Wow, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed by this set. I, like, look at all this, man. This is $20. What year are we living in? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Six figures like this for $20. Like, I'm shook, I'm shook. It's like just a little more than $3 a figure. Amazing. And that that's what you get for a blind bag. The backpack on this Marine also matches his leg piece, which is nice. And then we've got a missile pod of all things. I haven't seen a missile pod in Mega constructs in a long time, especially the fact that it's not in the game. Like, uh, what things from this uh, are not in the game? I guess we got the Hydra and the Plasma Pistol and the Shark Rifle. Yeah, the only thing is the Plasma Rifle. That is not in Halo Infinite, but I don't mind. Oh, look, wait, the grenade's right there. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? Was it there the whole time? Missile Pod. Let's attach this together. That's a classic mistake, putting the Missile Pod straight down. If you attached it like this and then fired it, it would blow you up. A Missile Pod is just like, you didn't need to include that in the set, but you did, and I respect you heavily for it. The last spike grenade can go in the elite's hand. And look at that, man. Look at that. Six figures. Four banished. And I think the banished are gonna get a run for their money against that trailblazer. Apparently in Halo Infinite, Spartans die pretty easily, but I think the trailblazer and the Marines stand a good chance against the banished. Let me know in the comments down below, who do you think will win, banished or UNSC? Rate this set out of 10 in the chat. I give it like a 20 out of 10, man. You know me, I'm very enthusiastic about my mega constructs, but this in particular is like a whole different level. The Marine Platoon Pack was great. Like I love the Marine Platoon Pack, but that was like just some basic Marines and there were some great details to it. There were some awesome features, but it was just Marines. This is like so incredible. This Spartan Trailblazer might be one of my favorite Spartans ever made. This is probably the best quality Marine that we have in Halo Infinite so far. It's on par with like the Clash on the Ring Marine and then the Banished, uh, it's just so many details. Man, that silver is such a perfect color choice. This Bassos has awesome details, including like really exceptionally done, like so well applied all of these colors on his chest. So Mega, I say bravo. This is just exceptional. I, I, I give this like glowing reviews. I don't actually really know of anything I would change, particularly for the price. And the fact that you gave us two brute head molds is a very, very cool feature.
And shout out to all the support on this video. I imagine this one's gonna pop off because I think this will be the first one on YouTube. It might be like second or third. I gotta edit this really well. And join me in the next couple of days where I'll do a Banished Garrison pack versus Marine Platoon pack review. And join me tomorrow where I'm going to open a full box of 32 Halo Infinite Series 3 blind bags. Spoiler, we're gonna have a lot more victors in our army after that. So you stay awesome, you stay safe folks. And Basus is signing off.